can spend 60 minutes in the traffic and travel barely 20 kilometers, while an hour on the open road can transport us to an entirely different world. That's what I discovered recently when I took a trip down the south coast, and now I'd like to share the experience with you. South Broome is located on KwaZulu-Natal's Hibiscus Coast, southwest of Durban. And after less than two hours on the road, Zaki arrived at a boutique beachside retreat, intriguingly called Nakai. <laughs> I love being busy, but a month or three of 25-hour days and eight-day weeks can leave me feeling a little bit discombobulated, as they would have said in the days of the Raj. Right now, I need to relax and reboot, and that's why I'm at the sea. Grant! <laughs> so good to meet you. I don't often say this to men, but you look like a vision in green. Well, welcome to paradise. And this lime green door sets the trend for the whole house. We brought it in from Kerala, and it's a bit of fun. Come through. <laughs> this is spectacular. This is what it's all about. This is where we bring our guests as they arrive. Savor this view and I see Paolo is ready for you with the yoga. I'm going to go and prep a smoothie for you. Awesome. Hi. Namaste, Namaste. Paolo. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Welcome to our sun deck for some yoga this morning. It's a beautiful day. I'm in desperate need of some recentering. We're going to do some sun salutations first and then we'll take it from there, but I need to ask you to take your shoes off first and I'm going to take my shirt off. Okay. So we're going to start from some sun salutations. So start at the top of your mat. Bring your toes together. Bring your heels to touch. We're going to bring the hands to prayer. Inhale, hands, arms up. Exhale, extend and fold forward. Relax the head. We're going to step the right leg back, the left leg back, and we're going to push back into downward dog. And come forward. Now bring the hips forward through the gap in the arms. Look straight ahead. Push back into. Down the dog, and step the right leg forward, left leg forward. Stand and fold forward. Inhale, straight back, straight arms, palms facing one another. Hands to heart center, hands at your sides. Having eased the tension in her muscles, mind and spirit, Zaki was looking forward to seeing more of the interior. Let's reach the bar, your smoothie's waiting. I'm gonna go prep for lunch. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this place is phenomenal. Great, you your ah, smoothie. How spoiled. Grant, how did you come up with the concept of Nakai? We've been privileged to travel through the tropics of the world for the last couple of years. And when you see what is available there, you think, why not create it locally? We've got a tropical climate. Let's use bright colours, let's have fun and make it a healthy retreat. A place where people can come, chill out, relax and have a good time. And where does the name come from? Makai is a Hawaiian word which means at the sea. Kai is a Hawaiian word for sea. Na is at. The style is very eclectic. How did you go about finding these amazing pieces? Collecting like this is something that you do over a number of years. So as you visit these wonderful tropical and subtropical places, you always want to buy something, bring it back, and over the years you develop a style. We've taken these and put them into a really bright, relaxed, chilled out setting. We found that we've got a special attraction for India because India has a special spiritual and luminous essence that we're attracted to. The guest bathroom is brought together by a beautiful a sofa table from India that we drilled a hole into and then put a beautiful lotus bowl carved out of marble onto. Let me show you to your room so you can freshen up. I can't wait to see it. Ananda is a Sanskrit word that can be translated as bliss, which sums up the emotions evoked by these luxuriously appointed spaces with an Eastern theme and an ocean view. So this is the Ananda or Honeymoon Suite. Wow. Here what we wanted to do is celebrate Indian elements mixed with other cultures but predominantly Indian. For example, these two big chests are made out of coconut from Kerala in the south of India, which is the Coconut Coast, the Malabar yes. Coast. These two trumpets are from the Tibetan community in exile in northern India, in Dharamsala. The hand is from New Delhi, a beautiful Buddha hand in bronze. 
On the bed, we have a beautiful fabric from Gandhi's Symmetry in New Delhi. Nakai accommodates for a variety of different dietary requirements and holistic treatments. Can you take me through some of these? What we do here is that we cater for people who have special dietary needs, who have special healing needs. This entails providing guests with the opportunity to enjoy delicious meals that cater to the therapies that they may be on, holistic therapies, for, such as the Gerson therapy. So they come here and they can be guaranteed that the water is pure, that the food is pure, that even the coffee is organic. The perfect person to speak to is Claude. He's waiting for you downstairs. I'm going to pop down as soon as I've freshened up. The sound of surf rushing and retreating on the shore adds to the tropical island ambiance. Claude, <laughs> Grant says you are the perfect person to chat to about Gerson therapy. Basically, the Gerson therapy is a program put together to detoxify your body and to flood your body with nutrients in a safe way which has proven itself over the years. What is it about and what does it entail? It involves cleaning up your environment, your home, what goes into your body and embarking on a program of juicing, creating an environment where your body can heal itself. You guys have separate kitchens for vegetarian food, for meat and dairy. When we looked at this house, it had two kitchens. We thought who would be crazy enough to buy this house with two kitchens? And it turned out it suited us perfectly because we were able to cook vegetarian and vegan in one kitchen and meat in the other kitchen. Speaking of which, I can smell something cooking in the kitchen. Shall we go and have a look? Oh, please! <laughs> the fresh sea air was wetting Zaggy's appetite. Hello. Thank you. Good. Could you smell it from downstairs? That's exactly why we came oh, upstairs. Super. What are you making? What's yeah. on the menu? Today we've got a delicious tahini and falafel salad, nice and light. So I'm just busy roasting some nuts here. So that's some almonds and a half a cup of tahini paste. And that's going to be the basis of the dressing. We're going to add that back to the heat and we're just going to wait for a few bubbles to appear. And you're looking for that slight dry consistency at the bottom of the pan. Okay. So we've got our nut butter, we're going to just put it down and we're going to grab a mixing bowl to mix it into. We're going to take our olive oil, so three parts olive oil. So we've got the red wine vinegar and we've got our balsamic vinegar. We're going to slowly whisk that until you've got a very light sort of creamy consistency in that mix. And we're going to grab our nut paste which is already on the side here and waiting. And we're going to add our nut paste. You're going to give it a light stir and then just set it aside briefly while we grab the dry spices. So we're going to just add some dry red chilies. Got a pinch of salt. We're just going to add a little bit of pepper, not all the pepper. We're going to give it a light whisk just to mix those in gently. Everything done with love. Uh, I was always taught to cook with passion and love, otherwise it doesn't taste good. Okay, and then to that, we're going to add our tamari. And then we're just going to give it a whisk. And then we have two wet spices and they are freshly grated ginger and chopped up fresh red chili. And there we're going to get some heat from both. We just need to add some fluidity to that. So in here, I've got a quarter cup of water. I always add the water a little bit at a time until you get the right consistency. We're going to set that aside in the fridge for a few minutes while we prepare the rest. I'm an enthusiastic omnivore, but in this case, I'm very happy to be a flexitarian and I'm salivating for this completely vegan meal. Well, I'm glad for that because it's going to be delicious. Can't wait! Just need to grate some brinjal and just keep grating until you have about a half a cup. Okay, that should be enough. So we're going to push that into a little bowl that we've set aside and we're going to put all of that in a food processor. Hello combined three tablespoons of cumin, some brinjal, soaked sunflower seeds, half an onion, baby marrow, carrots and red beans. So here we have our ready mixed paste and we have our dehydrator sheet and we're just going to make a few falafel kulals using two spoons. It's neat and tidy and quick and easy. So just grab some paste and then just press it between two spoons and we're going to place that on the dehydrator sheet. So you want to keep pressing the quenelles out until you finish the paste. Keep placing them on your dehydrator sheet. Once that is done, we're going to take this away and we're going to put it on the 
dehydrator and I'll come back with a full one. So this is what your falafels should look like after they've been dehydrated for eight hours. It should have a nice dry consistency inside. And here we're just gonna plate it up. Just place them neatly on the plate, like so. And we're gonna take our tahini dressing which we made earlier and we're just going to very generously drill it over. And there we have it, our tahini and falafel salad. Get out the kitchen, let Grant take over. This is the favorite part of everybody's meal and this is a fantastic dessert that is really easy to make. So starting off with a nice luscious avo, preferably a butter avo if you can get it. Put this all in. Next we're going to use this coconut cream or milk. Gives you that really good island taste. Very healthy. Next we add some really good organic lemon juice preferably. Add that in. Here's the guilty part but actually not that guilty because you're using good organic honey. You get lots of really good organic honey here in South Africa. I like to use a little bit of stevia. It's a totally safe sweetener. It doesn't raise your GI at all. Uh, just a couple of drops to give a layered sweetness. So now it's easy, time to blitz it. Now we're ready for plating. So gently pour it into a really nice container. Then I like to take the pomegranate, there's a little bit of that. Then gently zest some lemon into it, not too much. And then finally, I'm putting in a bit of lemon balm. And then I've used the bougainvillea flour as well to take it to another level. Let's start with the dragon fruit here. I decant it into a nice crystal glass. And then take a bit of limoncello, which is alcoholic, or if you don't like alcohol, just a squeeze of lemon into this. The third element is a granadilla cut in half. Put it into an ice cube holder. Freeze it up in any shape. In this case, I've used a heart. Put that limoncello onto that as well. That looks dreamy. Grant, I feel so spoiled. Well, that's what we aim to do here at Nakai. Take a really healthy dish, take it up to another level, make it really, really delicious, really healthy, so that you come back again. <laughs> and I will come back again Fantastic. and again and again. I think there's only one thing left to do. Go for it. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Only he can joke about it. <laughs> mm. I am feeling thoroughly spoiled and completely re-energized. My only wish is that I could stay the entire week. <laughs>